The story of Patrick Wayne Kearney is one marked by darkness and tragedy, unfolding across the landscapes of Southern California. Born on September 24, 1939 in Los Angeles, Kearney's early life seemed unremarkable on the surface. Growing up in a time of post-war optimism, he was the youngest in a family that provided him with a stable home environment. Despite this stability, Kearney faced challenges from an early age, including being bullied and feeling isolated during his formative years. Kearney's intelligence was evident early on, and he showed a particular aptitude for mechanics, a hobby that offered him solace and an escape from the difficulties of social interaction. Yet beneath this seemingly benign interest lay the stirrings of a troubled psyche. Kearney's fascination with mechanics and the workings of machines would later take on a sinister dimension as he began to dehumanize others, viewing them as objects to be manipulated and discarded. Throughout his adolescence, there were no reported run-ins with the law that would foreshadow Kearney's future crimes. His early life was outwardly normal, with no criminal record or indications of the violence that would later define him. However, the internal struggles Kearney faced, including feelings of inadequacy and anger, simmered beneath the surface, largely unnoticed by those around him. As Kearney transitioned into adulthood, his life appeared to follow a conventional path. He served in the United States Air Force, where he further honed his mechanical skills. After his service, he embarked on a career as an engineer, a profession that utilized his technical abilities and provided a semblance of normalcy. Yet the dark fantasies that Kearney harbored grew increasingly intense, eventually spilling over into reality. The late 1960s and early 1970s marked the beginning of Kearney's descent into serial murder. One of his earliest known victims was Albert Rivera, a young man whose life was brutally cut short. Kearney's method of operation involved preying on young men and boys, often hitchhikers or those he met in bars, exploiting the era's social and cultural flux. Kearney's crimes were characterized by a chilling methodicalness. He would offer his victims a ride, establish a false sense of security, and then kill them, typically with a gunshot to the head. What followed was a meticulous process of disposal. Kearney would dismember the bodies and encase them in trash bags, leaving them in remote areas across Southern California. This gruesome pattern earned him the moniker, the Trash Bag Killer. Among the many young men whose lives were brutally cut short by Kearney, the story of Albert Rivera stands as a poignant reminder of the human cost of Kearney's actions. Rivera, last seen alive in the vibrant streets of Los Angeles, became one of Kearney's earliest known victims. His remains, like those of many others, were discovered in a desolate area, encased in a trash bag, a grim signature that Kearney repeated with each act of murder. The discovery of Rivera's body along with the remains of other victims such as Ronald Dean Smith, a 17-year-old with his whole life ahead of him, began to reveal the extent of Kearney's depravity. Smith, who had vanished while hitchhiking, was found in a similar manner, his remains discarded without regard in the remote outskirts of Southern California. The locations where these bodies were found varied, from the sun-scorched deserts to the hidden recesses of the region's forests, each site marking a life taken too soon. Suspicion towards Kearney grew as the pattern of disappearances and discoveries of remains became increasingly difficult to ignore. Investigators noted the similarities in the modus operandi of the killings and the specific manner in which the bodies were disposed. Kearney's background in mechanics, coupled with his access to areas where the bodies were found, placed him under scrutiny. The breakthrough in the investigation came from a combination of forensic evidence, witness testimony, and Kearney's own increasingly erratic behavior which hinted at his guilt. Faced with mounting evidence and the realization that law enforcement was closing in, Kearney made the decision to surrender in 1977. Confessing to the murders of 28 young men and boys, Kearney's capture brought an end to a reign of terror that had haunted Southern California. His confession and subsequent trial shed light on the depths of his depravity. Kearney was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, a sentence that ensured he would spend the remainder of his life behind bars unable to harm others. In the years following his incarceration, Kearney's life was marked by the stark realities of his crimes. The details of his case became a subject of study for those seeking to understand the mind of a serial killer. Kearney himself became a figure of infamy, his name synonymous with the brutal and senseless loss of life he caused. Patrick Kearney's story is a somber reminder of the capacity for evil that can exist hidden within a person. It underscores the importance of vigilance, empathy, and the pursuit of justice for the victims.